sun starts to set on Little League Southeast Park in Warner Robins, Georgia, as we conclude day two of the Little League Southeastern Regional. Virginia takes on Alabama in an elimination contest. Tennessee right now sitting pretty at 2-0 after knocking off Georgia. Two teams still looking for a win. Virginia and Alabama tonight. It is win or go home. And we welcome you inside the booth, everybody. Drew Felios alongside Mike Lavalier. This is the sixth game we brought to you on ESPN3. And, Mike, we've seen schematically coaches make pitching decisions affecting tomorrow. That's not going to apply tonight. It's win or go home. I really don't think it's going to apply at all. These head coaches really have to think a different way. You have to go a little bit longer with your pitchers because, you know what, there's no saving for tomorrow. If you lose, you're on your way home. You win, you get a chance to play another game. All right, this Virginia team falling just short of Georgia yesterday, so they're going to send one of their best arms to the hill and Jake Gupton here tonight. Well, Jake Gupton, he's got to hit his spots. He's a fastball, curveball, changeup pitcher. His out, uh, his out pitch is his changeup offensively. He bats second for him. He has good average and good power. Alabama gave Tennessee all they could handle yesterday, and today they're going to turn to Jackson Milam on the hill. Well, Milam is a guy that uh, he's either going to be on or he's going to be off. They'll be able to tell within about 10 pitches, according to his coaches. Offensively, however, he does bat second, and he's got huge opposite field power. Virginia and Alabama do have one thing in common. They've both made eight appearances in Williamsport at the Little League World Series. Virginia, Alabama coming up next from Warner Robins. It is a perfect night to play baseball in Middle Georgia. Warner Robins, the side of the Little League Southeastern Regional. Virginia will take on Alabama as Jackson Milam takes the hill for Alabama. Favorite actor is Will Smith. Milam looking for his best performance here tonight. Now Jackson Milam uh, throws the ball hard. He's uh, got a good live fastball. The whole key for him is whether he can get it over the plate. If he's on, he's going to be tough to beat. And the lineup for Virginia, Sammy Doris getting set to hit. Jake Upton up second, Ryan Conmey, Nick Castrilli. The assistant coach's son hits cleanup, followed by DeWitt, Sean Quimby, Drew Norton eighth, and Kyle Pills will hit in the nine hole. Let's play some baseball. Crowd excited to be here tonight, so are we. Swing and foul this one back for Sammy Doris for strike one. Sammy Doris, the son of Dale Doris. This Virginia team had some pretty nice moments against Georgia, but they also had some lapses they're going to try and shore up here tonight. Meanwhile, if you're Alabama, Alabama led Tennessee, the defending champion, for almost three innings. Take a look at some of the young faces of this Virginia team. Well, I'd have to give uh, Jackson Milam a, uh, a check mark in the good category, uh, whether good or bad. Right now, he's uh, pumping in strikes. He's throwing the ball hard. That one misses high, one and two. Alabama team, tremendous chemistry they bring to the field. Young men have been playing together a long time. As that ball just missed on the inside part of the play. And Colton Wombles uh, almost had that ball heading down to third base. He thought it was strike three. This ball's going to be fouled away. Our home plate umpire today is Jeffrey Miller. Michael Grossman is our first base. Umpire, Jason Sally at second, Dominic Wright at third base. <laughs> One of the better plays that we'll see, Dale Doris, the coach, uh, took a couple hopper just barehanded like it was nothing. Now Sammy Doris has worked it to a full count. Love the uniforms this Alabama team is sporting. L.A. Dodger-like here in Warner Robins. Especially love the stirrups. Seen some good looking uniforms this year from all the teams. 
Three balls, two strikes. The count to Sammy Doris. And he takes it just low. That was awfully close. Let's take a look at the defense for Alabama. Getting in the outfield, Carson Scott, Jackson Yoxheimer, and Wyatt Tharp. The third baseman, Lane Griggs, Brandon Green at short, Carson Gilly at second, J.R. Kitchens at first, with Colton Wobbles behind the dish. Square around, lay a bunt down. Milam able to make the play, get the run at first base for the first out. Does he make the right decision here, Mike? Yeah, I think so, uh, especially in the first inning. Uh, maybe later on in the ball game, whenever you really have to try to get that lead runner. Uh, I think early in the first uh, inning, get the sure out, try to stay out of the big inning. And uh, yeah, I thought it was definitely the proper play. So one out brings up now Ryan Comney. Conley had some pretty nice moments yesterday. Takes this one low. Interesting thing with Conley, not just baseball player, outstanding hockey player as well. And a quick 3-0 to him. Nick Castrilli on deck for Virginia. 15 pitch. Coming up, and it's ball four from Jackson Milam. So runners on first and second. Now for Fort Hunt Little League out of Virginia. Yeah, a little conversation here. Carson Gilly, the second baseman. Colton Wombles out there to talk to Jackson Milam. Oh, just getting on the same page. Ball hit right back to the pitcher. Trying to find out exactly what you're going to do with it. Here's Nick Castrilli. Castrilli takes one in the back. Base is loaded now for Virginia. Well, here, this is uh, one of the things that had to worry about with Jackson Milam. Looked like he was on pretty good, and then with a walk, and now a hits batter, and that one wasn't close, and uh, Castrilli. Being the catcher that he is, uh, just kind of takes it off the back and uh, trots down to first. Now Chris Gilly comes out of the dugout for Alabama. Assistant coaches Brian Tharp, Daniel Woods. Well, we've uh, we've had 15 pitches. Evidently, Chris Gilly has decided that he's not so worried about what he sees. Virginia bats quiet for most of yesterday in that game against Georgia. Trying to ignite here early on this elimination night. Nathan DeWitt now for Virginia. Rather interesting uh, for me in, in the first inning we get bases loaded. Um, and they're playing the infield in instead of playing for the double play, uh, which is really tough to get. Here it is. Force play at home is on. And a good one made by Brandon Green as he fired a strike to Colton Wobbles to get the force. Well, nice going, Chris Gilly and his staff. Know your guys. Here's a ball that uh, should the shortstop have been playing deep, that would have been a definite run. Here, nice job by Brandon Green. Good throw to home play. Colton Wobbles acting like a first baseman. Cuts off that run. Now two outs. Brody Sean swinging a miss for strike one. Just one play like that, where a pitcher sees his defense putting in the work, and it just automatically writes the ship. That one inside on Sean for ball one. This will be the 20th pitch this inning from Jackson Milam. Key for these pitches to keep that pitch count down early in ball games. Two and one the count, two outs. Virginia looking to get on the board. Swing and fouls this one into the umpire's face mask. So it's two and two. And Jackson Milo, he's just not wasting any time. He's just wearing back, throwing fastball as good as he can. Yeah, home plate umpire uh, 
Little equipment uh, problem. Foul tip busted the strap on that throat protector. Old plate umpire Jeffrey Miller. Sure, in between innings, they'll try to get that fixed. And this Alabama team very opportunistic. You like that? Umpire has a little equipment check. They immediately huddle up at the mound. Trying to make good use of the time. Two and two and two out. And that's going to hit him. It's going to be a run for Virginia. But Brody Sean's going to pay for it. He's in a little pain as he heads down to first. Yeah, depending on where that hit him, if that hit him anywhere near the funny bone, that certainly, that, that, that uh, here will take another closer look and yeah, get him right off the tip of the elbow. Yeah, I don't care how tough you are. If you get hit there and anybody that's hit their funny bone knows how much that hurts. Oof. Still trying to get some feeling in it. And he gave it the thumbs up. I'm good to go. That brings up Garrett Quinby. Virginia's taking a 1 0 lead. Quinby gets around on this one. Shortstop going the other way. The force at second, and he is out there. So a tight play as Brody Sean was sliding into second base. Curious if that one gets reviewed. 1 0 Virginia with Alabama coming up. Little League Southeast Park, great place for the kids to be. Here on a baseball Saturday, 1-0 Virginia over Alabama. Jake Upton on the bump tonight for Virginia. Yeah, you know, Jake, uh, right-hander, uh, got to hit his spots. His fastball uh, in the lower 60s. He's got a good curveball. He's got a changeup, and, and really that's his out pitch. Uh, he's got a circle change. Uh, comes in, does a little dip away from the lefties, a little bit into the righties, uh, and that's a huge pitch for him. If he's throwing his fastball for strikes and that circle change, he's going to be tough to uh, to get a good swing at. Jackson Yoxheimer leads it off for Alabama. Jackson Milam second. J.R. Kitchens in the three hole, followed by Colton Wombles cleaning up. Gilly, Scott, Griggs, Brandon Green, and Wyatt Tharp making up this Alabama lineup. Yaxheimer fouls off the first pitch. Not a cloud in the sky tonight here in Warner Robins. Just perfect baseball conditions. Now, we only had one cloud last night, Drew, but it covered the entire state of Georgia. Had lots of rain in it, some lightning. In case you're just checking in on us, yesterday only got two games in. Here in Warner Robins, only got nearly two innings into the Florida-West Virginia game. We had to continue it early this morning. Nice stab at first, and Drew Norton tags the bag to complete the play. What a smooth play by Drew Norton, the first baseman. Ball off to his right, backhands it. Nice job. I talked about it earlier in the previous game. Jake Gupton doing what you should do when you're a pitcher, that ball off to the right side, go over, cover first base. There's no way that Norton was going to beat him there. So that's absolutely wonderfully executed. Jackson Milam takes strike one. That previous play, Drew, was kind of what I was expecting a little bit more of. Virginia kind of kicked the ball around a little bit in their first game. That right there was just fundamentally good baseball. Yeah, first time we've seen a pitcher instinctively go over there to cover first. Milam, good swing on it. This one down the left field line. It'll just bounce foul. Garrett Quimby in left field for Virginia tonight. Now the sun has gone down. 
One and two the count now to Jackson Milam. Alabama looking for their first base runner. Milam fighting it off. So pitcher on pitcher here. J.R. Kitchens is on deck for Alabama. Ladonia Youth Sports Little League coming to Alabama this year. Thrilling how Alabama got to this point. As in their second game at state, Brandon Green hit a home run to tie the game. Then J.R. Kitchens hits a walk-off grand slam. Alabama has taken quite a road to get to Warner Robins as Milam grounds out and a quick two outs. That brings to the plate now J.R. Kitchens. And this is the kind of game that Jack Jake Gupton has to throw. He's got to utilize his defense. He's not going to strike out a ton of hitters. And what he's doing, he's staying ahead. He's mixing his pitches, some breaking balls, some change-ups, moving the fastball in and out. That's why he's effective. J.R. Kinchins pitched a solid game yesterday for Alabama in that game against Tennessee. Watches this one outside. So a quick 2-0. Certainly giving him some respect. A couple of breaking balls. Yeah, three in a row. And you know, sometimes coaches will pick out certain hitters on the other team and say, you know what, I don't care. Unless the base is loaded, I will not let this guy beat me. So right now he's seen four breaking balls. So if I'm a hitter, guess what I'm looking for, Drew? Fastball? No, that pitch right there. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Kitchens goes by the nickname Big Red. This is a good matchup. Gupton against Kitchens. And this one belongs to the pitcher. What a breaking ball. Fell off the table. Virginia pumped up as they head to the dugout. A 1-0 lead after one. Back here in Warner Robins Little League Southeastern Regional. And we got some push-ups going on in the stands. I need to do more of those on these road trips. Spanky. Only one run on the board so far, but tell you what, this Virginia crowd has come to the ballpark tonight really pumped up. Yeah, some nice crowds uh, this year. I think uh, up a little bit from last year. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're boisterous into every single pitch as we get a look now at Drew Norton. Norton's got home run power. That's a big hit on the road here to Warner Robins. Eight, nine, and one here in the second for Virginia. And there's a strike on the outside part of the plate that's going to sit down Norton for the first out. It's always tough to play the final game of the day because it's sitting around all day. As Kyle Pilts now steps up for Virginia. Seen these teams throughout the ballpark, sitting on the berm, sitting in the stands, and they've been waiting all day to take the field. That's not always the best position to be in. Or is it, Spanky? If you're a manager, do you rather play first early in the morning or do you like to wait, play late at night? Nah, I like to get them first. Uh, they're in according to some coaches and some of the uh, – parents out uh, whenever these kids are around it's like uh, trying to herd cats. Wyatt Tharp comes in to make the catch for the second out. So quickly two down here in the second. Kind of catch your kids and you know they uh, they'll be running around the uh, you know maybe uh, good for some of them where they blow off a little bit of uh, energy and some of them probably overdo it a little bit but for the most part yeah, I'd like to get uh, get everything done first thing, especially early. Um, you know, I like to think that uh, it's a little bit cooler, a little bit better conditions. Uh, but then again, uh, you know, some of these teams, uh, you know, you get these kids that love those kickstarters. Uh, <laughs> by the time they get to the last game, I, I'm not so sure they're going to get to sleep okay. Here's a shot to the second baseman, Carson Gilly, there for the left-handed stab 
That gets the crowd from Alabama on their feet. Now Alabama needs some runs through one and a half, trailing by one early on in Warner Roberts. Break down all the regions vying for the right to advance to Williamsport. Southeast region make up of eight states. Far south is Florida, as far north as Virginia. Tennessee also involved, Alabama as well. Last year's representative coming from Goodlettsville, Tennessee. They're back this year. The year before that, it was South Carolina. Georgia's put together a great string. Altogether, Florida has advanced to Williamsport more than any other team in the southeastern region. 22 appearances in Williamsport. So Colton Wombles leads it off for Alabama here in the second. And a big part of that first inning for Alabama against the defending champions. Uh, got a big two out base hit. This one's put in play. And Virginia's defense making play after play here early on. Sammy Doris, the backhand at second. Wombles thought he was safe. I tell you when he can absolutely fly. Doris does everything possible. If I have another look at this, wow, that's close. And I think he just barely got him. But we are going to have a challenge. Jeffrey Miller is going to go to the backstop, get on the headset here. Instant replay. Been very busy throughout day two. Didn't have many yesterday, Mike, on day one, but had a few calls overturned today. And it's got to be conclusive proof. So, uh, you know, the one thing that we have uh, in our instant replay uh, official has is, you know, a couple of different angles have uh, slow motion. Our umpires out there have to make these calls quickly. Um, I personally uh, have them out. But, uh, again, that's to the naked eye uh, without any of the other angles. Uh, I thought it was a good call. There, take a look at Chuck Gupton. Manager for Virginia. Keep in mind, each team allowed two unsuccessful instant replays. So if you're challenged twice and the call is not overturned, you cannot challenge again. And I tell you, this uh, you can usually tell you know, the longer it takes for them to make a decision how close it was. Sometimes you need that super, super slow motion. You got to pause it. Try and judge when that ball hit that glove, where that foot was. Temperatures going down as the sun is set tonight. And Warner Robbins. As you said, Mike, I think because we're taking a little bit longer here to get this call, this could very well be reversed. He is going to be safe at first. Well, let's take another peek. Well, they say in the rule book, there's uh, no tie goes to the runner. It's more of a, a, a matter of speech in baseball, but uh, that's a situation where they feel that the foot hit before the ball was in the glove, so. So I got to rule out a base hit. There was nothing, uh, nothing bobbled. That's just uh, flat out speed. Carson Gilly up now for Alabama. Carson, the coach's son. And he'll take a strike. One and two now. Carson wanted that pitch. You can see by the expression on his face. Watches this one outside. Carson, a very tough guy to strike out. And find the gaps in the outfield as well. Hits one hard this time in a center field for a base hit. And now Alabama with something cooking here in the second. 
Well, good piece of hitting Carson Gilly. Two strikes on him. He cut down the swing. Looked like a real nice breaking ball from Jake Gupton. But he stayed with it and just lashed it in the center field. That was outstanding by Carson Gilly. Stadium now rocking. Alabama fans making a lot of noise. Carson Scott gets his turn now for Alabama. Carson did not start yesterday. Today he is in left field. Scott with a big swing there. It's one and one. You know, Chris Gilly asking for timeout. Going to get with Carson Scott. There's a chance it could have been a signal missed. First and second, nobody out. Always the opportunity for a sacrifice bunt. See, Wombles on second. Scott puts it in the right center field. This is going to drop. One run is in for Alabama. The second going to get waved on home. Here's the throw, not in time, and we are tied. Actually, Alabama with a two to one lead now as they've got Scott in the pickle, and they get him as he tries to take third base. But Alabama has taken a two to one lead. Scott does his job as a hitter, although he did overrun the base pass. Alabama crowd alive and well. Well, Carson Scott uh, really just hammers this ball into right center field. Two runs are going to score, and this is where Carson gets just a little bit greedy, makes a big turn around second base after the ball gets by the catcher. The situation, again, trying to make a little bit too much happen. Not sure. Uh, Yeah, it really didn't make any difference, you know, whether there was a tag or not. Once the runner goes head first, he's automatically out. There's no head first sliding in Little League. Little League Southeast Park is rocking right now. Ryan Comedy gets back in position for Virginia. One out. Wayne Griggs now the hitter. And hard to the third baseman, Nathan DeWitt, makes the play, and there's two down. We're we'll a nice crowd here, especially from Alabama. I think we talked a little bit about it. Uh, some of these teams uh, had a ways to go, but actually this team from Phoenix City is the closest, even closer than Peachtree City, Georgia. Yeah, it is right on that Alabama-Georgia line, just an hour and 37 minutes away. About 88 miles from here, Warner Robins. I don't know, Drew. Uh, how long was, uh, was that uh, distance-wise? <laughs> uh, wh whatever is it. For me, it's four hours, uh, according to the Georgia State Patrol. <laughs> Brandon Green now the hitter. He gets a good piece of one in the left field. And it's the third base hit this inning for Alabama. Make that number four. So Brandon Green comes through. And Alabama, the bottom of their order, igniting this rally. Brandon Green, scrappy. Shortstop for Alabama with surprising power as well. And now here is Wyatt Tharp. Tell you what, I think the theme of the day overall have been guys at the bottom of the order on all these teams getting the job done. The big swingers have not owned the biggest moments in all of these games. I think it's kind of a lesson to all little leaguers out there. No matter where you are in the order, you can make a huge difference. 
It's like, you know, you, you, you say you're the leadoff hitter. You only do that once a game. You know, unless the situation warrants it where, you know, somebody makes the last out. It's like the cleanup hitter. You're only hitting fourth once. So, you know, it's, uh, it's all about whenever you get up there, get up there with a good plan, do your best, try to get a good pitch, make an aggressive pass at it. And a strikeout. Jake Gupton finally quiets this Alabama offense. They get four hits, get two runs across. Big shot by Carson Scott does the most damage. And Alabama leads for the first time tonight. Some big dreams made in Little League Baseball. Xander Bogarts, shortstop of the Boston Red Sox, playing for Aruba South Little League back in the day. He really looks pretty much the same as he did <laughs> when he was playing Little League Baseball, doesn't he? He really does, and I tell you what, the East turned himself into quite a good player for the Red Sox. And did I mention the first place Red Sox? <laughs> I know there's a few uh, close friends out there that are listening to us that uh, have to be the uh, other team fans. Couple defensive changes for Alabama. Levi Pinder moves into right field. And Aubrey Wimberly is now the left fielder. I get a kick out of this Colton Wombles. The ball's all over the place. He's chasing it everywhere. I tell you one thing, if I could run like that, I'd probably be doing it all the time too. And the net for strike two. Two, three, and four here in the third for Virginia. This is Jake Gupton, pitcher on pitcher. Milo delivers. Foul ball. This one's hit hard center field and it's going to be caught by Jackson Yoxheimer, who took a step back, then charged in and made a nice catch. Yeah, fundamentally uh, correct uh, how to play the outfield. Uh, if you're not sure uh, about the ball, and that's a tough one for the center fielder where the ball's right at him, take that one step back because it's always easier to come in on the ball than it is to go back on. I see too many times young outfielders take that first step in. Before you know it, they're back retrieving it by the fence. Strike delivered to Ryan Conmey. He walked his first time up. Kami's yet to connect with one. But I can tell you this, uh, when he does, it's going to go a long way. He's got a lot of bat speed, a little bit of an uppercut swing. This one hit right back to the pitcher. Milo, an easy play. With two outs. Jackson Milo a little shaky in the first inning, but he has really been able to settle down, and Alabama kind of feeding off him right now. And, and he's kind of fed off his defense, hasn't he, Mike? He really has, and I think it was an important uh, part of this ball game. They played the infield in. They choked out that run at home play. He did hit the next batter to force in a run. But I think that was a part of it that, you know, if they play the infield, Back and they get a, uh, a couple of runs. I think uh, Jackson has a real tough time uh, making it as far as he has so far. Nick Castrilli's turn. Nick's father, Tony Castrilli, assistant coach for Virginia, You're reading the Little League Promise pledge at the pregame. Here tonight, this one popped up and out of play. Forty-two pitches so far for Jackson Milo. Castrilla 
Gets around on this one. And now it's two and two. Tell you what, early on, Virginia fans were going crazy. Now the Alabama fans seem to have taken over Little League Southeast Park. This is hit to right center field, and it is going to be in the gap. One hops the wall. Castrilli is in to second base with a stand-up double. Well, Castrilli had fouled off a couple of tough pitches. That one a little bit more out in the middle of the plate. Take a look and see how he did it. And again, short stroke right to the ball. Drives that ball one hop off the fence. Brings up Nathan DeWitt now. You know, look at that fence along in the outfield. They throw down and get Castrilli. No, he's called safe. Looked like the tag was down. And that throw was perfect from Colton Wombles. See if Brandon Green got the tag yeah, down here. Wombles uh, gets up. Uh, Brandon Green right there. Yeah, it looked like he got that right hand in just before the tag. The tag was a little bit more on the shoulder. But I can tell you, this is certainly get Castrilli's attention at second base. He's not going to get off uh, too, too far. I don't think so. Popped up. Alabama charging in is Yaxheimer. And he makes the grab. Nearly overran that one. But Alabama able to keep Virginia off the scoreboard through two and a half. It's two to one here in Warner Robins. Well, Little League University provides free educational information online for coaches, umpires, league volunteers, as well as parents. You can watch videos, review practice plans, or even get some ideas for playing catch in the backyard. Go to LittleLeagueUniversity.org today. Little League also on social media. Hashtag LLWS. We've been tweeting. Also LLSE. Gotten some friendly tweets and some not so friendly ones as well. Jackson Yaxheimer, leadoff batter for Alabama here in the bottom of the third. Jake Gupton still pitching for Virginia. Ryan Comney, good stab at short. You know, he's known as a hockey player. Looked like a hockey goalie on that one. That, that was a suction cup as the ball went right into his glove. Yeah, it's a nice play by Conmey. The only thing I'd like to see him do, he had plenty of time to set his feet. Here he throws off balance, the ball in the dirt. Nice pick at first by Drew Norton. But that's a situation where knowing how hard the ball's hit, go ahead, you made a great play to, to, to stab it. At that point, you know, try to get your feet under you, make a good solid throw. But, you know, it's, it's tough because you see so many big league uh, shortstops do that. And, and, and the, you know, the, a lot of these guys, they want to be like their heroes. And, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can understand it. What do you think is the thing that big leaguers maybe take for granted that li little leaguers should not do from the big leaguers? Like I was always taught, catch the ball with two hands in the outfield. Little things like that or hustle out a play to first base. A lot of times you'll even see at the big league level that doesn't happen. Yeah, I think those are uh, things that, that are going to happen in Little League where there's really no doubt. I mean, these kids, they hustle 100% of the time. I think one of the things that uh, is, uh, you know, a, a, a little bit uh, uh, tough for these hitters is some of the big league hitters have great, uh, they, 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 they have uh, great follow throughs. Um, and it looks like they're off balance. These guys try to be like them. What ends up happening is most of these guys are on balance, their head's on the ball, and then becomes this big finish. Well, these kids want to finish before they actually go ahead and transfer their weight, make the good contact out front. That's what's important. Now, how you finish afterwards, okay, I get that. 
You know, it's nice to hit the ball 450 feet. Well, I wouldn't know that, but you know, to hit it like that and have a big finish. Well, some of these young players are trying to finish before they actually make the good swing. J.R. Kitchen's turn now. Virginia sitting down one and two in the Alabama lineup. So again, keep in mind, the bottom of Alabama's order, very productive. Now we're at the top of the order. And guys are struggling just a bit. Kitchens, big swing. This one's got a chance. It's back, it's deep, and it's out of here. Well, we saw early in the ball game. He got six straight breaking balls. This pitch was a fastball, and now you're realizing why he got so many breaking balls. Here's a pitch. Really not too bad, just a little bit over the knees. He knew he hit it well. Take another look at it. Middle, middle in. But he's really showing good power to right field. That's the biggest shot that Kitchens has had since he had that walk-off grand slam in the playoffs on the way here to Warner Robins. Alabama's now opened up a two-run lead. Colton Wombles has home run power as well. So Gupton's got to be careful with him with two outs. <laughs> Wombles trying to keep that foot in the batter's box. <laughs> He's my human highlight film. This guy here, he has got some energy. Gets a hold of this one, and he's going to dig for second. This is a throwback player who, Mike, I have a chance you probably pay to watch him play baseball. <laughs> I, I get a kick out of this guy. Oh, boy. And, and he's so funny, so honest. He's, uh, I mean, it's so real. I mean, this guy here is just gets so fired up. And take a look at this. This is, this is dangerous. This is almost waxed Jake Gupton, but uh, you see him. That's a double all the way. He's going to go ahead and get the uniform dirty. I don't think he's ever finished the game without a dirty uni. I love it. Old school Colton Wobbles here at the Southeast Regional. Now Carson Gilly. Gilly gets a piece of one. This one's going to drop. Here comes Wobbles. It's 4-1. to one. I think there's any emotion in that body right there. Nice job, Carson Gilly. They're doing a really good job, Alabama is, of staying on the ball, not trying to pull that outside pitch. No chance at all at getting the fast wombles at home. Finally, Virginia able to get out of the inning, but Alabama adds two more. Four to one after three here in the nightcap. As we head into the fourth inning, Virginia needs a spark. And assistant coach Dale Doris trying to provide it. Well, here you take a look. And uh, right now, coach is what he's doing. He's trying to get their attention. Uh, right now, they're kind of, they get off to a decent start. But uh, what he's doing is, is saying, hey, guys, you know what? We cannot wait any longer. We've got, uh, we've got nine more outs. We've got to come back here. And, and that really, a lot of it is just about being uh, attentive as a coach. Uh, I'm not a huge, uh, uh, you know, believer in yelling and screaming because if you do it all the time, I, I think the kids just tune you out. But if there are times whenever you do raise your voice, get their attention, you know, hey, there's something, uh, something to be said of, uh, like, hey, guys, you know, I don't want to go home. I don't want you guys to want to go home. Hey, let's go ahead and let's give them a finish. Bennett Sapel will lead it off for Virginia. So keep in mind, Virginia still has to get five players into the game. The guys that have not hit yet. Change made for Alabama. Kitchens, the guy who hit the home run, is going to move behind the plate now. So Kitchens goes from first base to catcher. And also, Colton Womble is going to move over to first base. Well, and I, to me, Drew, that's uh, just giving them a little bit of flexibility. 
should they want Colton Wombles to come in to pitch? There are certain things uh, that are that are set. There's eligibility rules, and uh, you know one of the things is uh, you know if you've played uh, catcher. Uh, in four or more innings, then you cannot come in and pitch. So three innings catch, you know, let them go play first base. Should they need Colton Wombles on the mound, now they're going to be able to do it. This ball hit to the pitcher. Jackson Milam takes care of it for the first down. You know, Mike, this has been the most, I think, enjoyable game to watch because I think for the first time today we've had a general flow to the game. The other games we've had pitching changes in the first and second inning. And it's not just great for the spectator. I think it's great for the players as well. Don't fault any coaches for making those moves, but it's just good to watch two teams battle with their best pitchers on the mound this elimination night. You're right. I mean, there's a there's a flow to the game. Uh, whenever you keep the pitchers uh, in there, they're throwing strikes. Uh, you know, to me, it's a better game. But also, you have to realize uh, that these coaches have a job to do, and they're getting the most out of the uh, their pieces uh, or, or their, their their chessmen. Uh, you know, you get the pitch counts, you've got the mandatory play. Uh, there are going to be stops uh, in the game, uh, regardless of what happens, and uh, and just the way it's set up. But uh, yeah, like you said. Uh, we haven't had many pitchers go more than two, maybe three innings, and uh, here we are seeing uh, Jackson Milam out there for the fourth. 53 total pitches as he's going to work against Michael Lavanka now. Lavanka, the second pitch hitter of this inning for Virginia. So first it was Hill off the bench. Now Lavanka gets a chance to take his swing and will take one high here for ball one. Everything on the line tonight. Alabama in blue. Virginia in the white and green. Big swing and a miss. One and two. Take a look at Chuck Upton, manager for Virginia. His team needing a spark here. Upton very laid back. A lot of stories to tell. This guy's the one who keeps everybody on an even keel. It's been quite a run for this Virginia team. They just play good old-fashioned baseball, but they can use a play to spark the dugout right now. Lavanka with a good swing at that fastball. I tell you, just... Jackson Milam, he's, he's not out there to trick anybody. He's just rearing back, throwing one fastball after another. He's got a fastball and a changeup, but it's mostly been that number one. Only one strikeout for Milam. That one high and nearly hit LaPonka. So it'll be three balls, two strikes, full count here with one out. LaVonga swinging away, fouls this one back. So do you think that Alabama's going to try and get through this inning with Jackson Milam, if possible? I think they've got to go as long as they can with him. 60 pitches now. Yeah, I think uh, Chris Gilley and Daniel Woods, Brian Tharp, uh, the uh, brain trust for this Alabama team, uh, I, think, I think they know that. Uh, yeah, they're getting uh, Milam uh, probably on a, one of his better nights. You're going to ride him as long as you can. Uh, the next time he comes out, yeah, he might not throw nearly as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that it's his game to win or lose. Lavanga draws the walk. Virginia fans looking for reason to cheer once again. And now a quick meeting at the mound as Colton Wombo is going to come over along with Kitchens. Good to have a word with Milam. And now Alabama coach will come out of the dugout as well. So Chris Gilley will try and slow things down here. Velocity is still very much there for Jackson Milam. So you got to think he's probably going to get another hitter. He 
Meanwhile, Antonio Marucci, Marcucci rather, for Virginia will be the pinch hitter. And it's got to be tough when you're trying to start a rally with all pinch hitters. That's what Virginia's trying to do in this instant. Guys in their first at bat. And you see a pinch runner, Brody Sean, coming in to run it first. So here's Mark Cucci. So he swings it from the left side. Milam as cool as a cucumber. Just missed love. Virginia players know this is a big moment in this game. All of a sudden, the control of Milam coming unraveled just a little bit. Again, I've noticed so far with the left handed hitters that Milam really kind of misses away from them. Some pitchers at this level will just have a little harder time facing left handers. There's a the strike. So now, full count, a big pitch coming up. In there. For strike three, Marcucci swinging, and there's two down. That's a nice job by Jackson Milam. Missed badly to get the three and one, then made two very good pitches. Here's the last one that punches him out. Good fastball, little tail on it, middle away. And I think Chris Gilley's going to go ahead and make a change. This looks like it will be it for Jackson Milam. And he is going to get a huge round of applause. Three and two-thirds innings for this Alabama team. Tip his cap to the crowd. And he'll take his position at first base. Colton Wombles will be the new pitcher. He'll warm up and we'll continue action after this. Well, most of the uh, emotion coming out of the Alabama dugout has come from this young man, Colton Wombles. So he's going to bring that emotion down to the bump, try and shut the door on Virginia here in the fourth. Yeah, Wombles, uh, good fastball. He saw a good arm behind the home plate. He's upper 60s, me touch 70 with the curveball. But you can just tell he's going to go out there. He's given a thousand percent. Jackson Milam moves over to first base. And the hitter is Joseph Humphreys. Another big cut. Strike two. Only one hit for Virginia, seven for Alabama. Wombles trying to punch him out here. This is low. Okay, you're talking about intensity. This young man has got it. There's the strike, and that'll do it. So Wobble shuts the door. Alabama head into the dugout through three and a half. They lead 4-1 here in the nightcap. Little League World Series founded 1939 by Carl Stotts. Maynard Little League won the first Little League World Series in 1947. 
First in the National League's form in Canada and Panama in 1951. Such rich history with Little League Baseball. 80 plus countries playing and over 2 million children taking part each year. There's nothing quite like it. And for Virginia, we're going to have a new pitcher, Sammy Doris, getting loose. Doris, the coach's son, son of Dale Doris. So Doris will replace Jake Gupton. Well, when Sammy Doris is ready, much like Jake Gupton, uh, kind of the same uh, type of stuff. Uh, maybe a few more curveballs from Sammy. Uh, fastball in the uh, mid to low 60s. Jake Gupton moves to shortstop. Ryan Comney will head to third. And Nathan DeWitt now the second baseman. So Virginia completely shuffles their infield. And now here's Gage Woods for Alabama. Impressive, uh, this Alabama club. All of them up there swinging the bats. They stay on the ball, utilize the middle of the field, the opposite field. Sammy Doris tosses that one outside, goes to the backstop. One ball, one strike. Slow start for Alabama. They have come on strong. What four runs on the board over the last few innings. That was that good curveball by Sammy Doris. Started out towards the outside corner and broke way off the plate. So 2-2 two -two count. Here's the delivery. Gage Woods, swing and strike three. A good mix of pitches. A couple of breaking balls away and then got him with that inside fastball. That's Brandon Green's turn. Green the shortstop. Alabama lineup has banged out seven hits. Push four runs across the plate. Both teams on their second pitcher. Now Doris, this one put in play. It's going to be a tough one for Conmey. How about that? I'll tell you what, Mike, I know you had a little bit of an adjustment you wanted him to make on that last play. At shortstop, but not this one. This was perfect. Yeah, this is uh, really uh, not much else he could have done. He came in, nice uh, bare hand, one, one motion, and take a look, and uh, nice balance. That's just outstanding play. Conmey uh, showing some uh, nice range at short, and now over at third base. Well, you're seeing why Conmey is so highly regarded as a hockey player because that hand-eye coordination just looks off the charts. Now Levi Pinder up for Alabama. Pinder is really fun to watch. It's the youngest player on this Alabama roster. Big swing there. So one ball, two strikes. Pinder's actually playing with a broken nose. So he has been gutting it out. Watches this one low. It's Aubrey Wimberly, head bat for Alabama. That is my mistake. So Wimberly is the batter. And a big swing and a miss for strike three. So another web gem 
for Virginia. Ryan Comney, a little barehanded action. Virginia's got some work to do offensively, though, trailing by three. It's such a unique game. I mean, people don't understand. People, when they watch baseball, they think it's kind of boring, but there's so much little detail to baseball that people don't understand. I think if they understood it, they'd be like, wow, this is this is crazy game. This is, this is the hardest game in sports because there's so many little details to this game that you have to do right to be successful. And uh, it makes you think, it makes you, uh, it, you really enjoy it, it makes you mad, it makes you cry. I mean, there's a little motion swing in baseball that I don't think a lot of sports have. And Mr. Arenado, probably the best young third baseman in the game. He's certainly a good one, and uh, I really enjoy what he says. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough game because uh, you have to be used to failure at the plate. Uh, again, uh, you know, at the big league level, you fail seven out of ten times, you find yourself in Cooperstown. Uh, you fail seven out of ten times in your regular job, guess what? You're in Palookaville, okay? <laughs> You're looking for work. Uh, so, you know, it's something that you, you have to accept it. You don't have to like it. There are tears. There are uh, a, a lot of joy. There's uh, a, a wealth of emotions. Uh, and uh, I tell you, I, I think you hit it right on the head. This is, this is a fabulous game. If it's understood, you really can enjoy it. Yeah, very well said by Arenado. There's a base hit into center field. Virginia needs some runs. Sammy Doris, the leadoff guy. That's a good start. So changes for Alabama in the field. Wyatt Tharp now in right. Gage Woods in left. And Levi Pinder playing third base. Colton wobbles. This ball going to get away from him. Doris going to head to second. That yeah, was a breaking ball by Colton Wombles, and uh, again, being so excitable, he's trying to make that happen, and he's got to stay patient. Uh, whenever you're going to throw the breaking ball, you really have to stay on your backside that much longer, give your chance for your uh, arm a chance to catch up. Sammy Doris having fun on the base pass right now. Advances to second, then goes to third on consecutive pitches. J.R. Kitchens behind the plate. Ninth pitch coming up for Colton Wombles. Jake Gupton, the batter, takes one high and outside. Right now with the defense, they're playing in on the corners, back in the middle. Big swing and a miss there for strike two. So what they're saying is if they hit a ground ball to the middle of the infield, they're going to go ahead and concede the run. They're now moving the first baseman back. Full count coming. This is going to be the toughest inning for Alabama. You just feel it. Virginia is going to apply all the pressure with the top of their order. And they have got two on here. Runners on the corners. So Fort Hunt Little League realizing the time is now. I think this is good timing. Chris Gilly coming out to slow things down. And basically just get the troops, say, okay, look, this is what we need to do, fellas. Okay, Cole, get the ball over the plate. Infield, make sure of one. This is where you don't want to be greedy as a defender. Get the sure out. It may not be the lead runner, but get an out this inning right now. Interesting, too. You saw the infielders from Alabama come in to join the conversation. And Coach Gilly said, you know what? Let's just make this between us. Kitchens, Wombles, and myself. And home plate umpire is going to crash this party quickly. I know some uh, coaches, uh, they call that uh, no witnesses. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Ryan Comedy has been waiting for that big at bat. And had a good looking swing he has shown throughout the past two games. Trying to connect on one here. Takes a strike. This 
would be the perfect time. He could tie this game with one swing of the bat. Out of the way. And Quickly another, down 0-2. Another good fastball. Two good fastballs. Colton Wombles. Right now, if you had confidence in your breaking ball, you might want to throw one away and see if Comney will chase him. Steady goes right after him and rings him up. Colton Wombles comes up with a huge pitch. Comney can't believe it. Well, here's the pitch. Yeah, that's a tough pitch right there. That's, uh, looks like it's knee high right on the outside corner. Again, uh, in this situation, you get two runners on base. I still, I still say you got to protect. That's really now the batter. You know, it seems like that little break in the action, Chris Gilly, the manager for Alabama, seems like it's worked because Wombles feels like he's just regained his touch here. Confidence is back. He throws the ball. It's one and one. Guy's got the look of steel. You know, one thing you can say about Wombles, too, Mike, he is keeping the ball low. This one's hit right back at him and a base hit. Virginia's going to get one run. First and second, still one out. And it's 4-2. Yeah, second base hit of the game for Nick Castrilli. Took first at bat, one right in the middle of the back, followed up by a double, and then this base hit in RBI. Another rocket right back through the box. Take a look. This takes no time getting right past him. Now it's Nathan DeWitt. DeWitt puts this one in the outfield. It is back to the wall. One run is in. Here comes the tying run. Virginia's not in this game at four. Now the ebb and flow of baseball. Mr. Moe now on the side of Virginia. Take a look, DeWitt going oppo here. Nice job of running by Castrilli. The outfielders get the ball in as quick as they can, but no chance at all. Both runners come and score. We got a new ball game. Fourth hit of the game for Virginia. The biggest one. Two RBI double by Nathan DeWitt. And now, that Bennett Spell hitting here. They'll replace Brody Sean. Gotta love the way Virginia's regained their mojo here. To get another visit to the mound from Chris Gilly. And this looks like it will be it for Colton Wobbles. So Jackson Yoxheimer is going to get called to duty. Wobbles will head to the outfield. Yoxheimer will warm up. We're tied at four. We got a ball game here in Warner Robins. Big inning for Virginia, and it causes another pitching change on the Alabama side. Be the third pitcher of the night. Jackson Yaxheimer gets the ball. Hell, yeah, Jackson, a little bit more of a finesse type pitcher. Not quite the fastballs of Milam or Wombles, but he does throw in a curveball and a changeup.
And it's Appel batting for Virginia with one out. And a strike delivered by Oxheimer. Bumbles moves to center field. And quickly 0-2 on the bat. This has been a game of momentum. Virginia started out the game on fire. Then Alabama seemed to quiet them down. Alabama went on top four to one. Virginia looking for a spark. Saw Dale Doris, assistant coach, laying into his team a few innings ago. And as of right now, it looks like it worked. Both of these teams playing with the urgency that this is an elimination game. You see Wombles in center field now. Strike three. Big strikeout by Oxheimer. Well, he hit a spot. Keep the ball down. Keep it around the knees. And we'll have another change. Did see Oxheimer in limited duty yesterday as he came in relief of J.R. Kitchens. Tell you what, this, this crowd tonight, they've been something. They have not stopped since the first pitch. This feels like a college football game, doesn't it? I, they have definitely, uh, they've made their mark, if anything, on the stands. There's been some stomping, yelling, screaming going on. This press box is shaking. Michael Lavanka, second time up for him. He walked his last time at bat. Check swing, and he does go around. That last at bat was a good at bat. He saw a number of pitches, fouled off a couple of really tough pitches, and ended up working out that walk. Alabama trying to get to the dugout. Miss for strike two, two and two now. This ball's popped up, playable. Yaksheimer runs it down, and that'll do it for Virginia. But it's their best inning. Three runs, and they're top of the fifth. All tied at four through four and a half here in Warner Robins. We'll get a look at tomorrow's schedule as we'll begin action bright and early at 10 a.m. West Virginia battles South Carolina. That is a loser's bracket game. Then we got Florida taking on North Carolina in the winner's bracket. And then it gets kind of complicated. The winner of that West Virginia-South Carolina game will be one and one. They'll take on Georgia. And then in our final contest, a winner against a loser. Mike will let you sort it out the rest of the way because the brackets in double elimination with eight teams, it's a little bit complicated the deeper you move into the tournament, doesn't it? Yachtheimer takes a big swing. And this one's fouled off. Well, the one thing about it is the brackets are already predetermined. It's not like, well, if this team wins, then they get to play that one. Uh, it, it's basically uh, certain things have to happen. Um, it's much easier to be uh, to, to look at it. Uh, we've got brackets all over the ballpark here. <laughs> we get them. Uh, uh, but just to try to explain it, yeah, I probably could. All I know is we've seen a lot of baseball over the last two days. A lot of outstanding baseball. Tremendous by these young men. Representing their, their leagues, their states, and doing it on the big stage. Jackson Yaxheimer looking to get on base for the first time tonight. Waves at that one, it's into right field. Just stuck the bat out there and connected and at the perfect spot. You know, Sammy Doris has been throwing a real nice breaking ball. That one, however, stayed way up in the zone. The only way that Yoxheimer can get to this ball is if it does stay up, and he did stay with it, lashed it in the right field. That's what's do, what you do as a hitter. You take advantage of a mistake. The ball stays up. You've got to try to punish it. 
Jackson Milam now the hitter. They set him up outside. He hits it to right. Making the turn for third now is Yoxheimer. And now runners on the corners. Alabama making a statement here in the fifth. Okay, Yoxheimer was absolutely fabulous. Turning second base, he knew exactly where he was going to head up. The ball just hammered by Milam. And look at this, he just says, no doubt whatsoever, he's getting to third base. Great base running, great coaching. J.R. Kitchens comes up to bat now. Keep in mind, he's already got a home run here tonight. So Kitchens swinging a hot bat. This one gets by the catcher. Yaxheimer trying for home. Alabama has retaken the lead. That is what you call aggressive baseball. That sure is. With nobody out and your number three hitter up, you almost think that, you know, boy, I want to make sure. But uh, this ball just gets away just enough from Castrilli. Tries to make the play to Norris. Good slide. Meanwhile, one and one to count to Kitchens. So Milam on second base now. Well, take a little bit off that one. Had Kitchens fooled one and two. Well, Kitchens hit the home run on the fastball. I'd be very surprised if he sees another. He did, and he misses it. This one was placed perfectly, though, on the outside part of the plate. Here comes Colton Wobbles now for Alabama. This is the guy that ignites everything. If he can get a base hit here, he and the crowd will go absolutely crazy. Swings at the first pitch and pops it up. Brody Sean right there. He makes the grab, tagging up as Milam. So Alabama will have now a runner on third base. Carson Gilly will get set to hit. A nice job by Brody Sean. He had to go a little ways towards the line to get that ball. Collected himself, made the catch. Didn't try to do too much, get it back into the infield. Sammy Doris working quickly. Swing and a miss for strike one. And I tell you what that does by advancing to third base, even with two outs, puts a little bit more pressure on that infield defense, puts a little more pressure on the catcher, but never mind. Pulled the string on that one. It's the third strike. So Doris able to get out, just allowing a run. Alabama back on top, 5-4 as we head to the sixth. Well, it's been a wild night here in Warner Robins, Little League Southeast Regional. Five to four, the score, Alabama with a one-run lead. Their defense now on the field. They can keep Virginia off the scoreboard. They will advance. It's all up to Jackson Yoxheimer and the Alabama defense. Drew Norton, eight, nine, and one for Virginia. Takes a strike, it's one and one. Drew Norton playing first base tonight. Chases that one, it's one and two. A nice breaking ball by Yoxheimer. Again, you just can't just throw just heaters. Struck him out. He'll show him the good breaking ball and then comes back with the freezer. That fastball knee high outside corner. Pitcher's pitch. There's not a fan in this ballpark that is not into this game. Yeah, you see in rally hats, you see in every good luck charm that each folk possesses. So Will Sharp will get his first at bat. How would you like to be Mr. Sharp? Put into this situation. Team Nietzsche with one out. Everything on the line. 
Well, put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. That's what you practice for, right? That's what you play for? That's it. It's one thing to perform. It's another thing to do it in the clutch. Yoxheimer misses high. And if Sharp can just get on base, Mike, that's the key in this situation, right? Just get on base. Uh, he's got to be taken all the way right there, 2-0. and oh. Sharp watches one outside. It's 3-1. and one. If you're Yoxheimer, you don't want to lose this guy. Kitchens gets the signal, and there's a strike. You can tell Sharp really wanted that to be ball four. Yeah, it was a tough pitch. Again, knee-high outside corner, great pitcher's pitch. Fouls one away, hangs in there. These are the moments of baseball that you just love. Full count. This one gets away, and Sharp will take his base. So Will does his job coming off the bench. Nice job, young man. And now what you have is you've got the top of the order coming up. Sammy Doris, base hit last time up, started that rally. It got him back in this ball game. So this Virginia ball club is not done with yet. Timeout now going to be called. Chuck Upton may make a change here. Looks like we may have a pinch runner for Will Sharp. I think that Virginia would maybe elect for a little bit more speed on first. I think that is what we're going to see. Joseph Humphreys called into duty. And Will Sharp will head into a very well received dugout right now. Yeah, nicely done, young man. Did what you needed to do. Gave your team a chance. Get a runner on base. Sammy Doris takes a strike. Doris has battled tonight on the mound for Virginia. Saw the signals from our center field camera when catcher wiggles his fingers. That's generally a sign for the changeup. Signal inside. This one's put in play. Yachtsheimer will go get it and throw over to first for the easy out. Incorrect play. Nice, uh, nicely done, Jackson Yachtsheimer. Didn't panic. Knew he had a fast runner at the plate, and Sammy Doris. You ideally would love to have gotten Humphreys at second base, but I don't think he had a shot. Now you get your second out. Time to make a pitch. Or if you're at the plate, time to come up with that big hit. Virginia down to their final out. Tying run is at second base. Jackson Yoxheimer trying to finish the deal for Alabama. Jake Gupton, come up big so many times for his team. He is a clutch player, described by his coaches. Now would be a good time to come through, gets a piece of this one, and it's one ball, one strike. So Mike, right now, if you are Jake Gupton, what are you thinking? Yeah, all I'm thinking about is getting a good pitch to hit, trying to drive the ball right through the middle. Yoxheimer plays it again, and the out made. Alabama will hang on for a dramatic 5-4 victory, and they'll stay alive here in the Little League Southeastern Regional.
Well, unfortunately, every year we have to see a team leave with two losses. Fort Hunt, Virginia played tough yesterday against Tennessee today. Another tough game against Alabama. They can keep their heads high. They were down 4-1. to one. They came back, tied it up 4-4. Four to four. And just couldn't hold on. Alabama with a gutsy performance. Nice team win for them. 400 Virginia. Yeah, I just hope that, you know, they had a great experience here. Something they probably won't ever forget. But they need to keep their heads up high. And uh, hopefully uh, wish all of them good luck. For Alabama, they live to fight one more day. Yeah, well played by Virginia. They'll go home with two losses, but they left everything on this field. Meanwhile, Alabama moves on. What a two days it has been in Warner Robins so far. Well, we'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m., bright and early for West Virginia and South Carolina. Until then, for Mike LaVolier, for our great crew, I'm Drew Felios saying so long and good night from Warner Robins.